concept, Videosports.com presents IHSAA Football Sectional 10 Action. Tonight, from Kankakee Valley High School in Wheatfield, Indiana, it's the rematch of two of the top football programs in 2012. The Kankakee Valley Cougars and the Hobart Brickies. And it's brought to you by Oak Partners Wealth and Retirement Management in Crown Point and Valparaiso. They provide comprehensive investment consulting with the goal of adding value to your investment efforts and maximizing results. Oak Partners Investments in Crown Point and in Valparaiso. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso and Griffith, a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. If you're a sportsman, Blythe's has what you're looking for. Visit Blythe's today at teamblythe's.com. The Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters and Millwrights, the Carpenters Union, here to better the lives of all the men and women who work at our trade. And finally, the Indiana Sports and Medical Science Institute in Crown Point, offering the most comprehensive athletic development and sports performance training environment in Northwest Indiana. Dr. Timothy Mullally and his staff focus on teaching each athlete correct training techniques, reducing injury potential, and improving overall athletic performance and improvement. The Indiana Sports and Medical Science Institute in Crown Point. Today's opening contest features the Kankakee Valley Cougars, who opened sectional play this evening with a record of 8 and 1, and whose only loss came at the hands of NCC foe, the Andrean 59ers. A year ago, the Cougars were an 8 loss team, but head coach Brad Stewart and his staff have turned this program around, going from worse to first and have built them into one of the region's best in 2012. You can say the same thing for the Hobart Brickies, whose second-year coach Ryan Turley has his kids be leaving in Hobart football. Hobart's record is 7-2, with losses to the Crown Point Bulldogs and to these Kankakee Valley Cougars. When you think of Hobart, Indiana, you think of high school football at its best. It's been a while since the glory days of championship football and the infamous Bricky Bowl. But Bricky football is back and here to stay. Next, the co-NCC champion Hobart Brickies take on the Kankakee Valley Cougars. Next, right here at newconceptvideosports.com. To open this highly anticipated matchup, Kankakee Valley's Mark Lukacek got things started with the opening boot that was fielded by Hobart's Danny Stewart at the 24-yard line. By the time he got the handle on the ball, he was met by Cougar Johnny Williams, who set the tone for this opening match of co-NCC champions. On Hobart's first offensive play, Alex Metz carried for six yards before Johnny Williams dragged him down. Then on second and four, Alex Metz on the carry again up to the 36-yard line and a bricky first down. Next, it was Ian Drobak for maybe a yard on the play and a nice stop by Johnny Williams who has been very active early for the Cougars. Dre Devereaux on a second down carry up to the 44-yard line before Joe Bolin and Johnny Williams teamed up to make the tackle. On second and short from the 44-yard line, it was Ian Drillback powering his way for three yards, and the Bricks have reset the downs. From the 47-yard line, it was Hobart's Dre Devereaux taking the pitch, but running him down before he was able to turn up field was Mark Lukacek, and who else but Johnny Williams. Then it was Hobart quarterback Andrew Barris laying one up perfectly for Alex Metz and a seven yard pass play resulting in a third and three inside Cougar territory at the 46 yard line. Again, it was Alex Metz who has bounced around for maybe two and a half yards, bringing up a fourth and one for the Brickies. So the Bricks decided to run an offensive play on fourth down from the KV 45-yard line. On the snap, Andrew Barris on the keeper down to the 40, and another Hobart first down on their initial drive. Following an incomplete pass attempt on first down, the Bricks will have a second and 10 coming up. 
Mixing it up well offensively early, it was Alex Metz' turn. After an initial hit by a KV defender, Metz was able to spin from his pursuer and lunge forward for eight yards down to the 32-yard line. Next, it was Ian Drobak up the gut for another Hobart first down at the Cougar 24, and the Bricks offense is controlling the line of scrimmage early. On the first down snap, Drobak for a couple. Then on the second down play, a Hobart holding penalty moved the ball back to the 27 where the Brickies will replay the down. But the Brickies not only picked up the 13 yards needed to move the chains again, but again inside the red zone at the seven yard line on a pass from Andrew Barris to Anthony Burgos. Finally, it was Alex Metz doing what he does best, spinning to elude his pursuers and gaining enough yardage to break the plane of the goal line and give the Hobart Brickies the lead. Grosso kick was good, so with six and a half minutes gone in this first period and the Bricks leading by seven, the KV Cougars will finally get their hands on the ball offensively. The Hobart kickoff was fielded at the three-yard line by KV's Mark Lukacek and with some nice initial moves carried all the way to the Cougar 38 and good field position where the Kankakee Valley Cougars will have the ball offensively for the first time tonight. On Kankakee Valley's first snap of the evening, Tyler Berkey carried for a couple, but a face mask penalty on Hobart tacked on an additional five yards, where the host team will have a second and three. Next, it was Alex Burdine on a strong run, down to the Hobart 49, and a KV first down. Alex Burdine on the first down carry for maybe a yard. Next, it was Keegan Higgins for two yards before Anthony Burgo stopped him in his tracks. Then on a big third and seven early for the Cougars, Tyler Berkey on the carry for three yards, but not enough yardage to move the chains and the Cougars will have to punt. The boot was down at the Hobart 23, where again the Brickies will be on offense. On first down, Alex Metz slipping his way through the Cougar defense for nine yards. Then it was short yard specialist Ian Drobak, picking up just enough yardage to again move the chains for the visitors. With the Hobart Brickies controlling the line of scrimmage so far in this contest, 
Alex Metz took the first down snap and with some nice upfront blocking by Ian Drobak and Nick Boken was able to carry the rock near the midfield stripe to the 48. And again, a fresh set of downs for the kids from up north. Then it was Ian Drobak to the 50 and a second and eight coming up. On the second down play, Barris dropped back, but escaped the sack and moved the ball to the KB46 for a few positive yards. And this first quarter has come to an end, with the Hobart Brickies leading the Kankakee Valley Cougars 7-0. The Brickies on third down attempted a pass that fell incomplete and a Hobart punt. The Del Grosso kick ended up in the hands of Tommy Holm, who fielded the ball at the two-yard line. But right there to make the stop was Anthony Burgos and Elijah Walker. And that's where the Cougars will start their next offensive set. On the first down snap, Tyler Berkey for a couple yards. Berkey again for a yard. Again, Kankakee Valley's Tyler Berkey, but this time a Hobart pack tackle and a three and out for the NCC co-champions. The Cougar punt went out of bounds at the 27 yard line where the Brickies will have excellent field position with 9.42 left in the first half and leading by seven. Before the first down snap, a procedure call on the Bricks moved the ball back to the 32, where Hobart will have a first and 15. On the snap, Alex Metz took the handoff, but he was tripped up inadvertently by Andrew Barris and a loss of two on the play, bringing up a second and 17. But on the very next play, Andrew Barris laid up a perfect pass that Elijah Walker ran under. And the quick strike combination of Barris to Walker has struck again. And the bricky lead is 13. The Del Grosso extra point kick is good. And with a few ticks under nine minutes to play in the first half, the Hobart Brickies lead by two touchdowns. With the KV Cougars not used to trailing by a double digit lead very often, and primarily a run oriented team, it will be interesting to see how they come out and attack the Brickie defense on their next offensive set. On the first down snap, again back to their bread and butter, but this time Keegan Higgins on the carry and he was dropped for a one-yard gain by Hobart's Elijah Walker. Next, it was quarterback Joe Boland's turn on the keeper for four yards, and a big third down play coming up. On the snap, doing what they do best and staying on the ground, Johnny Williams on the carry, and with two big upfront blocks, one by Alex Burdine and the other by Tyler Berkey, sprung the back 
and a well-needed first down for the Kankakee Valley Cougars. But on the first down play, a holding penalty moved the ball back to the 28, where the Cougars will replay first down. On the snap, Bolin dropped back, then fired a pass intended for tight end Tommy Holm that was incomplete. But an offensive pass interference penalty was called on the Cougars, moving the ball back to the 24, where the Kankakee Valley team will try again. Replaying first down again, Berkey on the carry, but he was stopped at the 20 by a Hobart Pack tackle and a second and long. Next, Joe Boland fired a pass over the middle that was off the mark, and right there was Hobart Bricky Anthony Burgos picking off the attempt, and again the bricks are threatened. Then on the very next play, Andrew Barris handed the ball off to Dre Devereaux, and he took it home, stunning the KV faithful, and the Brickies now lead by 20. the Del Grosso extra point and the touchback on the kickoff the KV Cougars find themselves trailing by 21 with 549 left and a half in a game dominated by the purple and gold on the first down snap from their own 20 Johnny Morrison on the carry for three and another Hobart pack tackle next it was Morrison again for a gain of six and a third and one coming up Then, Johnny Williams on the carry, and enough to move the chains and a fresh set of downs. But on the first down play, almost a disaster hit when Johnny Williams fumbled the ball on the carry. But fortunately for the Cougars, the fumble was recovered by Alex Burdine, and KV will keep control of the ball. With the ball just shy of the 40, the Cougars will have a second and four. On the snap, a strong run up the middle by Alex Burdine, and KV will have the ball near the midfield stripe at the 48, with time becoming a factor in the first half. Next, a pitch to Williams, and a fine run inside Hobart territory, down to the 44-yard line. On second and one, Burdine again for a few, but enough yards to reset the downs for the Cougars. Then it was Johnny Williams again to the 38-yard line.
Keegan Higgins for three yards on the carry. On third and four from the 35, Johnny Williams for three and a fourth and one. Again, Johnny Williams and a KV first down. And the Cougars are moving the ball well on the ground for the first time today. Following a keeper by Bolin, who ran out of bounds at the 17, then an incomplete pass, the Cougars will have a third and one. On the snap, Joe Bolin looked to the end zone and fired a pass intended for Tommy Horn. But right there defensively was Dre Devereaux intercepting the pass in the end zone, ending the KV threat. So the Brickies will run out the clock and putting an end to the challenging first half for the Kankakee Valley Cougars and the dominating two quarters for the Hobart Brickies. It's not what we expected, but we have two quarters remaining with the score at intermission. The Brickies 21, the Cougars nothing. This game is brought to you by Oak Partners Wealth and Retirement Management in Crown Point and Valparaiso, Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso and Griffith, the Indiana, Kentucky and Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters and Millwrights, and Dr. Mullally and the Indiana Sports and Medical Science Institute in Crown Point. To restart this ball game, Kankakee Valley will be on offense. Following the Del Grosso touchback, the Cougars will start from their own 20-yard line. On the first down snap, Alex Burdine powered his way for six yards on a strong run up the middle. Burdine again for a couple more, and a Hobart pack tackle will bring up a third and short for KV. Then on the third down play, Keegan Higgins on the carry for maybe a yard, and a nice defensive stop and a KV punt. The Mark Lukacic punt was grabbed by Anthony Burgos near the 45, but he was dropped almost immediately by Tim Spoonfeld, and that's where the Bricks will begin their first offensive set of the half. A first down handoff to Alex Metz for maybe three yards. Next, Ian Droback, keeping his legs moving, was able to pick up six yards, and a third and one coming up. Then it was Dre Devereaux on the carry and the Hobart touchdown. And what just might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. The Del Grosso extra point was good, and as usual, the kickoff was a touchback. So again, the shell-shocked KV Cougars will begin offensively from their own 20-yard line. On first down, Alex Burdine for a couple yards. Keegan Higgins got the call next for four more yards, and a third and four.
Then pounding out three more yards on the next carry, it was Keegan Higgins again, and a fourth and one. Trailing by 28 with 7.13 left in a third, the Cougars decided to run a play on fourth down deep inside their own territory. On the snap, it was Higgins again, and he carried for just enough to move the chains and a KV first down. On the first down play, Alex Burdine was handed the ball, and right there to make the stop for no gain was Hobart's Jarrett Colvin, and a second and ten coming up. Then it was Joel Bolin on the keeper, and he was tripped up in the backfield for a two-yard loss and a third and 12 for the Cougars. On the next snap, Johnny Morrison was handed the ball, and Bricky Gerald Valenzuela was right there to drag him down following a short game. But with the Kankakee Valley Cougars being shut out offensively since the outset of this contest, tempers began to flare. And on the play, some extracurricular activity between the two teams erupted, and the officials had to sort things out after a number of flags had been thrown. Following minutes of discussion, officials called personal foul penalties on KV's Johnny Morrison and on Hobart's Anthony Burgos, and both players were ejected from the game. Now the rule states if a player is ejected, he must sit out the team's next game. Take another look, and you decide. Once play resumed, following the delay, the Kankakee Valley Cougars had a fourth and ten and had to punt. The kick was down just inside KV territory at the 49, and the Bricks will take over right there. On the play, a holding penalty on Hobart moved the ball back inside Bricky territory at the 44, where the Brickies will start over, this time a first and 17. On the snap, Danny Stewart on the end around and he picked up six of those yards close to the original line of scrimmage and a second and 11. Next, it was Alex Metz on the call, but this time Cougar Matt Myers beat his blocker and was able to drop the Hobart back for a five yard loss on the play and a third and long for the Brickies. But then on third down, Hobart cornerback Andrew Barris again quieted the KV faithful when he let one fly down the far sidelines that 5A junior Dre Devereaux was able to grab and another scoring opportunity for the Brickies with just under four minutes left in the third period. On first down, Ian drove back on the carry for no gain. Dre Devereaux on a second down carry, and he sliced his way through the KV defense for eight, and a third and two coming up for the Bricks. Next, it was Andrew Barris on the keeper and he carried all the way down to the one and a first in goal for the Brickies on a day when everything is going right for the team from up north. 
finally, it was Alex Metz and the Hobart Brickies with 2.29 left in the third have derailed this team from Wheatfield in a way no one expected, especially the standing room only crowd in attendance. Like a scene from Groundhog Day, the Del Grosso extra point was good, followed by the touchback on the kickoff. And once again, the Kankakee Valley Cougars will begin offensively from their own 20. On first down, Tyler Berkey for four yards. Then a couple incomplete pass attempts and another KV punt. The kick was down at the Cougar 47. And that's where the Brickies will take over, leading by 35. On the first down play, Kenny Calvillo followed his blockers for a nice gain down to the 39-yard line. Calvillo again, and yet another Hobart first down. Then on the next play, Danny Stewart on the carry, but a nice stop in the backfield by KV's Austin Brewster for a loss of one on the play. And this quarter has finally come to an end with the Hobart Brickies leading big. On the first play of the fourth quarter, Ian drove back out the call and carried for three yards, bringing up a third and 10 from the original line of scrimmage. Next, it was Kenny Calvillo for a couple yards on the play and a fourth down 50-yard field goal attempt by All-State kicker Aaron Del Grosso. But before the snap, an encroachment penalty on the Cougars moved the ball up five yards, making the attempt a 45-yarder. A touchback on the kickoff, and the Kankakee Valley Cougars will again begin from their 20-yard line. On the first down snap, Tyler Berkey on a nice run for eight yards. Berkey again for another yard, and a third and one coming up for the Cougars. Once again, Tyler Berkey, and he gained just enough to move the chains for KV and a first down near the 34-yard line. Then on a rare first down pass attempt for KV quarterback Joel Bolin, who dropped back, and with a nice throw and a just as nice catch, hit Matt Meyer over the middle, and a first down inside Hobart territory at the 46-yard line. Next, it was Mark Lukacek testing the left side and gaining enough yardage to again reset the chains for the Cougars. But a first down incomplete pass attempt and one on second where Hobart was called for interference, the Cougars will have a first down inside the red zone at the 18 yard line. On the snap, Tyler Berkey for three yards. Then on second and seven before the handoff, the KV back slipped on the wet turf, so quarterback Joel Bolin ran with the ball and picked up maybe two yards on the play. On the third down play, quarterback Joe Bolin hit Mark Lukacic on the pass, and he carried to the nine where he was dropped by Dre Devereaux. But on the play, a personal foul penalty on Hobart moved the ball to the four, 
where the Cougars will have a fresh set of downs. On first down, Tyler Berkey for two yards. It was Berkey again, down to the one. Then it was Joe Bolin on the keeper, and he tried to jump the goal line. But right there to make the stop was Scotty Sopko, denying the Kankakee Valley quarterback of a touchdown. On the fourth and one snap, Cougar star back Tyler Berkey, who has been playing on a high ankle sprain that he injured in the last game of the season, was dropped at the line of scrimmage by Hobart's Jared Colvin, and the Hobart Brickies will take over on down. Finally, a few running plays later and time ran out in this one. You never know what to expect until you play the game. Congratulations to the Hobart Brickies who have an 8-2 record heading into the second round of sectional play next week against Mishawaka. And that game will be played at the Brickyard. For the Kankakee Valley Cougars, a year to remember. A team that lost eight games a season ago shocked the region by winning eight games this season and taking home a share of the 2012 NCC title. Football is alive and well in Wheatfield, and this is just the beginning for the Cougars. Following the game, a few words from Hobart head coach Ryan Turley and Bricky Jr. Dre Devereaux. Did you guys prepare any differently from, uh, from that first game when you lost, uh, when you almost came back and won in, in week four? Uh, uh, did you prepare? prepare any differently or was it pretty much the same game plan as you had in that first game that you played them? Uh, we tweaked a couple things here and there. I mean, the main thing is is that, you know, we, we realized that there was more than one back. <laughs> the first game, I think we were, uh, you know, keying on Berkey too much and then we got hurt by some other guys. So, uh, and Berkey did have a little uh, ankle, high ankle sprain this uh, last week against Munster and he probably wasn't 100%. Definitely. I mean, that, 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 that's too bad. I feel bad for the kid because you never, you know, you, you, you want to see kids play at full strength and especially in the playoffs. So, I mean, he's a great running back. Uh, they, they had a very nice season. Uh, hats off to Coach Stewart and his staff. Uh, they, they brought football back to KV. Seems like somebody steps up every week for you in this, uh, this fantastic season you've had so far. And it looked like Dre Deverell really had a great game today. A couple, couple of TDs and a big interception there to halt that drive at the end of the first half for KV. Yeah, Dre's a player, and he, I mean, he, he he hasn't had the uh, maybe the, the carries on offense as much, but he sure had a breakout night there where he had some nice runs, and uh, he, he's been playing solid defense all year. I mean, he was uh, junior All-State last year, and, you know, he, he, he's, he's a big-time player. Congratulations on a great win. Thank you. Um, your um, that INT there right at the end of the first half was a real big turning point. It stopped KV from scoring. It would have given them some momentum, I believe, to start the second half. Yeah, uh, we did a good job, coaching staff did a good job breaking down the, their offense and like what routes they're going to run and like when they pass, what they're going to do and good job stopping the run. It's good defensive game. Did you kind of smell that one out that it was coming your way? Yeah, I had a feeling it was. And then your touchdown too, uh, that was a big uh, big score right after the Burgos interception. Yeah, we had good job by the O-line. They had wide open holes. They did a good job all night just blocking Great job by O-line. How confident were you guys? You know, uh, after you lost the, the first time you played KV, uh, um, it was a close game, but you had a good comeback and almost pulled it out. Did, did that give you some kind of confidence that you could still beat these guys? Yeah, it gave us a whole lot of motivation all throughout the week. Everyone was just prepared and just came out there and was focused. So you think it's easier now to play a team a second time after you know what, what they're like? Oh, yeah, a lot easier. Certainly, it certainly showed the score tonight. Uh, yes, congratulations sir. and uh, good luck next week. All right, thank you. Thank you, Drake. Explain to us a little bit about that skirmish uh, in the third quarter. Uh, what actually did happen there? Or uh, what you saw? Yeah, believe me. I, I mean, it was on the opposite uh, opposite side, so I, I can't say that I saw anything perfectly. All I saw uh, was Anthony Burgos, number seven, pulling kids away. And as they broke things up, their coaches came over and uh, said that our kids handled it with class. And that number seven, you know, was a class act. And then the next thing you know, they're throwing number seven out of the game. And that, that's where we kind of met. And we even met at the end of the game. And we're going to try to make things right. And hopefully with the help of uh, Bob, Bob Guerrero and his film work, 
we're going to see because the officials did agree to take a look at the film and uh, they want to make sure that the right kid's penalized. Uh, the kid that admitted to doing it, uh, we pulled him from the game at that time uh, because we're not going to leave someone out there that you know should have been penalized. But in, in return, we also lost Anthony at that moment. And you know how the rule goes is, you know, you don't only lose them for uh, this game, you lose them for the next. So uh, this is, you know, uncharted territory for me, and I've never seen it done. But I, I appreciate the, the referees saying that they're willing to take a look in it and, and write the commissioner. And you just want to see the right kid penalized. But, but by no means do we condone that type of activity, and we got to keep our composure under pressure. Well, Coach, you got step one out of the way. Uh, how about next week? Any thoughts on uh, who you might be playing next week? Uh, we know that uh, you know whoever we play, it's going to be a battle. Uh, if Mishawaka wins, we get it at home, and if Lowell wins, we go down to Lowell. So uh, we're, we're, we're just excited to be, still be playing. Okay, great game, Coach. Uh, you got the team uh, really inspired, and uh, good luck next week. Well, I, I want to say thank you, and, and thanks to Bob Guerrero for all the support that you've given the Brickies all season. Thank you. Okay, our pleasure. Thank you. This game has been brought to you by Oak Partners Wealth and Retirement Management in Crown Point and Valparaiso, Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso and Griffith, the Indiana, Kentucky and Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters and Millwrights, and Dr. Mullally and the Indiana Sports and Medical Science Institute in Crown Point. For Frank Rokas, this is Bob Guerrero. Mm -hmm.